What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Now today we're gonna be watching some Mr. Nightmare. Um scary uh um three true scary horror stories. So um now uh, I did not watch this video before. I I was planning on watching it but I I really didn't plan on making no video today, but I just decided to make one. So well, let's just hop into it. 16 minutes. Alright, let's get it. Cause it's a little bit. Okay. I really like the stories, by the way. It's like really good. Interesting. When me and my troublemaking friends were 13 years old, one of the many rowdy and mischievous things we would do would be Saturday night ding-dong ditch sessions. Ten years ago, we all lived on the same block in a typical suburban neighborhood. At the time, there were a lot less houses and more woods, though. I'm going to make up names for my friends for the case of this story. There was Mark, James, and Matt. Either Mark or James were usually the ones to go up to the houses and ring the bells. Matt and I, on the other hand, would usually find hiding spots right away. We hit about five or six houses. I remember all of the men who answered the doors gave pretty much the same reactions. They'd step out onto the stoop, one or two would yell something, and then they'd walk back inside. For a couple of houses, we'd ring the bell again for a better reaction. One guy- Teenagers. I yelled he was calling the cops the second time. So when he shut his door, we all booked it down the street and went to the next block over. As I mentioned, ten years ago in this neighborhood, there were patches of wood sitting where houses sit today. On the next block over, there were a few patches of wood surrounding some of the houses, and the houses on this block seemed to be more unkempt. The first house on the block was across the street from the patch of woods, which made for a perfect hiding spot. The house was kind of run-down looking. Tall grass, a ratty old car with a cover on it in the driveway, and overall just a small house. Mark went up to ring the bell. Why would you ring it? He barely had time to make it across the street before the door opened. Damn. It was another man to answer the door. This guy really big, about six foot and stocky build. Unlike oh. the others, he was furious immediately. Oh. He walked around his whole front yard checking the bushes, yelling threats. We all laughed as we always did. Eventually, he finally went back inside. Damn. Mark waited a few minutes, checked the windows, and then ran back up the stoop to ring the bell again. I didn't envy him with this house. I would not be bold enough to ring that man's bell again. Mark knew he probably didn't have as much time, so he ran to the side of the house and out of sight. The door opened much quicker this time, and this time the man came out with a rifle in his hand. We all looked at each other, simultaneously going, Oh shit, under our breath. The man checked all the places he checked before, and then a few extra places this time, like behind his car, behind a couple trees. And then he walked to the center of his lawn, and just stood there, as if he were thinking. He looked around, and then his head stopped as he was facing us in the woods. Me, Matt, and James looked at each other. We You're ducked done. lower in hopes that he didn't see us. You're done. After ten seconds of staring in our direction, the man went back into his home. Then, we saw him appear at his front window, standing still like a statue, looking in our direction in the woods once again. We saw Mark creeping back over to the man's front door, but there was nothing we could do. We were too afraid to move or yell anything. Mark rang the bell once again and ran for it. Why? The man didn't move, though. At least not... Bro, why... Why would you ring the doorbell again? If the dude came out with a rifle, a rifle, what's wrong with you? Come on, the dude came out with a rifle. To about blow a hole in your head. Mm, stop playing. Not for another minute. Then he turned and walked away from the window. We didn't see Mark again, but we were still too nervous to move or say anything. We wouldn't be friends no more. The next I'm not hanging with you no more. We heard Mark's voice from across the street yelling, "Run!" We didn't understand until we heard someone running up from behind us, realizing upon turning our heads that it was the man from across the street with his rifle in hand, who oh. pointed at us. We ran like little prey from a predator, to Mark who was waiting for us across the street. 
We ran for blocks until we were sure we lost him. Mark explained that he yelled when he saw the man sneaking across the street into the patch of woods with his gun. We didn't report him or any of what happened. We just told a few friends and that was it. Luckily the house was many blocks from us, so we never really had to pass it again. We won't be friends no more. I'm not hanging with y'all no more just because of that. Like, come on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, you got me. You got me out there doing that bad stuff. And then guy almost killed us. We're not we're not friends no more. Come on. I lived in a house from hell for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I was a college student, and my parents were paying for a house for me to live in. I'm spoiled, I know. Well, the house was modest, nothing fancy or huge, and I was happy with it. Well, for the first few days, anyway. Then, things quickly started getting strange. Does someone live in your house? On a rainy Saturday with nothing to do, I was watching TV for a few hours. Oof. That was when I heard a scrape on my living room floor. No, no. The room, I'm out. Got into I'm out. Or something. I sat back down and resumed. No, 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 no. So I would have heard that, and I know I'm the only one in the house. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm gonna zoom out that door as quick as I can. I don't care. I'm gonna zoom out with my phone. Call the police. Have them search the house immediately. Don't play no games. Watching TV. That was the first weird occurrence. Someone's in this house. The rain continued throughout the rest of the day and into the night, which made for an excuse to not go out. Hang on, y'all. Hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Life lesson. Whenever you move into a new house, make sure you check every door, everything. Check every door, every hatch. Make sure you know your house. Because someone could be living in there the whole time. For like years and you don't even know it. Like just be eating up all your food. Like that's why you always check every single door. That's that's a life lesson. You'll thank me later. Trust me. See old hobo uh, cookies and chips in the corner. I stayed in watching more TV in the living room. I perked up when I thought I heard something from the kitchen. Laughably, I took a pillow with me as I guess some sort of weapon and walked over to the kitchen doorway. A pillow, boy? There, in the middle have of the a pillow dark fight? kitchen, was a box of Cheerios on the floor, spilling out hundreds of the tiny O's. I had no idea how that could have happened. Nevertheless, I dropped the pillow and began cleaning up the Cheerios off the floor. As I was doing so, I heard a creak, like the sound weak areas of a wood floor make when someone steps on them. Oh, nah, no. Find the kitchen table. I looked up, but nobody was there. I knew I was going crazy now. Every little sound must have been making me paranoid. I cleaned the Cheerios and went back to watching TV. You're done. The thunder outside was getting louder as the bulk of the storm seemed to be passing overhead. Yet I found it to be strangely relaxing. That was the last thing I remember, appreciating the sound of the storm outside before waking up from what seemed to be an hour-long doze. The TV was still on, but that wasn't what woke me. I remember believing I woke up to a bang or a thud from downstairs. Regardless, I turned off the TV and mm -hmm. marched upstairs to bed. Wow, the next why? day was normal, as was the day after that. And you're still here. You're still here. No, 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 no. We are out. I am out. Why are you still there? It wasn't until the next gray, rainy day that strange things started happening again. I woke up in my bed that morning feeling like I had been drinking all night the night before. I felt sicker than I'd ever felt with any hangover before. I didn't do much walking around that day. The gloomy dark weather only made me more bedridden. I left the TV in my bedroom on all day just as background noise, with a garbage pail by my side in case I had to puke. At midday, I muted the TV after hearing sounds coming from above me. The You're attic, still there? 
the attic door was actually in my bedroom, and most of the attic was built over that bedroom. It wasn't just one thud I heard, it was three or four. I managed to get out of bed, despite the fact that every time I moved, I wanted to puke. Somebody is in your house. Down, you need to go now. With me and climbed up the steps. I pulled the light switch down to light up the attic. There were a few old... You don't investigate. You go. You... Gosh. Okay. Boxes that must have belonged to the previous owner scattered about. But I couldn't see any living things to this produce boy. those noises. This boy here. Stupid I climbed anybody. back down Stupid. quickly Stupid. because I was kind of scared of that attic. There were no more noises. Until that night. I woke up to at first what I thought was thunder. Still feeling a bit sick. The familiar sound of a thud from up in the attic gave me chills. I pulled the string to the attic door back down, took my baseball bat once again, and climbed up the stairs. I made myself angry and screamed in the most intimidating voice I could. But before I could turn the light on, I heard the sound of a child giggling in the pitch black attic. Oh no. Words no. cannot describe the feeling of weightlessness, the feeling of my insides dropping inside of my body. It's a child? The fear that I felt. The word fear is not enough to describe what I felt at that moment. Oh. I was out of that house so fast, I don't even remember running. You should have been there, Dad. In the cold rain and asked him to pick me up. I explained everything the best I could. My parents saw how emotional I was about this, and in a weird sense, I think they believed me. I packed all of my things up with my parents the next day, and moved back home. To this day, I'm convinced what I experienced in that house was completely paranormal. No, well, either that or you had a child living in your house, my boy. That was no paranormal, my ass. You had someone in your house. I used to work as a maid for some old lady for a couple of weeks when I was 20. She had a really big yet old house on a property that could have been beautiful if she had actually taken care of it. She had two acres of land surrounded by woods in three directions yeah. and the road on the other. That's a big the house, house itself that was ancient, a huge mostly house. made of wood. And the interior was really, really dark. She would often keep the blind shut in some rooms for reasons I didn't understand. I find that sketchy. I would sometimes open the blinds to let some sunlight in, only to find that she'd have shut them by the next time I entered the room. She lit some rooms by candle, which made the house seem even more prehistoric from the inside. To top it off, the wood floors were creaky as hell just about everywhere in the house. <laughs> what is she, a vampire? The woman's name was Mel. She was around 70 years old. The kind of work Mel would have me do would be mostly physical stuff that she couldn't do very well anymore. Like sweeping, dusting, cleaning dishes, doing laundry, sorting mail, and other things of that sort. Makes sense. One weekend, Mel asked me to sleep there for a night or two. The house had like four bedrooms, yet she lived alone, so it wasn't an issue. Well, this takes place over the course of a Friday, and technically a Saturday as well. I arrived as per usual on Friday, speaking very few words to Mel. I dropped my backpack full of my clothes and cosmetics onto the bed in the bedroom that I was going to be sleeping in. As I turned to the door, I saw Mel standing by the doorway. She had a creepy way about her, and this entrance was no exception. She didn't say hello, which wasn't as weird as it sounds. She just instructed me to clean the bedroom right away. After that, she just told me to simply straighten up the whole house, and then she went upstairs. I didn't see her for the rest of the day, but I would occasionally hear her walking around upstairs in her bedroom. It was weird, she would seem to walk back and forth. There were no TVs in this house, so I didn't know what she could have been doing. No TV. One thing that I found bizarre was how protective she was of her basement. She made it clear it was completely off limits and she didn't want me going down there. Nighttime came and I went to bed early. He's going this go was down before there. smartphones were a thing, so I didn't even know what time it was. It was probably 9 or 10 o'clock though. For the first few hours, everything was peaceful. However, I still had trouble falling asleep given that it was the most uncomfortable bed I'd ever been in. 
It felt like hours later that I started hearing footsteps outside my room on the creaky floors. It sounded like Mel was passing my room really slowly. Maybe she was just going to the bathroom. A few minutes later, I heard her footsteps again. But then she stopped outside my door this time. I sat up and listened. I could hear the creaking from behind the door of Mel standing there, and it was starting to creep me out. She finally walked away. I heard her go down the stairs, and then I heard a door open and close from downstairs. I had a feeling it was the basement door. It was a while later that I heard the door open and close again, and then heavy, slow footsteps coming up the creaky stairs. The footsteps once again came to my door, then stopped. I sat up once again to listen, and I could hear creaks of pressure on the floor outside the door. And then I heard the doorknob start to turn. I laid back down and pulled the sheets over me and pretended to be asleep. I heard Mel take a few steps into the room, pause, and then leave. She went back to her room and shut the door. I was a bit disturbed. This was very bizarre behavior. I waited about half an hour before deciding I had to see what was in that basement. Mm -hmm. I got out of the rickety bed, tiptoed to the door, and then tiptoed down the stairs the best I could. Told you I opened you the heavy the basement. basement door, flipped on the lights, and crept down the stairs. I made it to the bottom step and held in the urge to scream. There were two old wooden chairs dead center in the basement and there were two of what I could only describe as decaying corpses with wigs on them sitting in them. No. The sight of a bug crawling on one of them made me want to puke even more. No. I brought myself no. deeper into the basement, closer to the corpses. I had to make sure they were real. Both of the corpses had men's wigs on them. The bigger of the two also had a beret on. I don't know much about corpses or their rate of decaying. But I'd say these corpses were both almost a year old. I felt like my heart stopped momentarily when I heard footsteps coming from upstairs on the first floor. I couldn't make it to the light switch. I had no time. I hid behind one of the couches in the basement as I heard slow, heavy footsteps coming down one creaky stair at a time. I had my hands covering my mouth as I heard Mel reach the last stair. I heard her whisper my name. For half a second, I looked around the couch and saw Mel halfway across the basement already with a big kitchen knife in her hand. I knew she would be too slow to catch me, so I ran for it to the stairs. She screamed my name and followed as fast as she could. When I made it to the first floor of the house, I ran upstairs to the bedroom I was sleeping in to grab my backpack. Why didn't you go? By the time I ran back downstairs, Mel was at the top basement step. I ran out the front door and to my car. I turned it on, caught my breath, looked to the front door of the big old house, and saw Mel standing there. I drove off the huge property and down the road, making it back home within ten minutes. Fortunately, I never gave Mel any of my information, such as my address or my phone number, so she was smart. never able to contact me again. That's so smart. If I had to guess, I'd say one of those corpses belonged to her dead husband that she'd mentioned twice to me. As for the other smaller corpse, I have no idea. But regardless, it was a disturbing scene to witness, and something was way off about that woman. You think? Ah, oh, damn. Gosh, man, y'all, people... People are crazy, man. Y'all need to be careful. Alright, y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I need to hurry up and uh, get this over with. Alright. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Uh, peace.